Welcome back guys to Factorio Recursion, this episode number 10. Today we are going to venture into the world of nuclear power. And I would also like to craft a Power Armor Mark III here, which is going to be very expensive. So we need to do some prep work for both of those things. We need to get some modules crafting so we can make this thing. We also need to make an area for processing units. I don't have an area for that outside of... The research area over here on the left, I don't want to take from that because I only am making enough over there to supply the research. And we also need to, what do we need? We need to start mining up this uranium here. So let's grab us some mining drills. Let's see if I have any left over in one of these kind of rando chests. No, I guess I distributed them all. And uh, since I'm only going to need a little bit, let's actually take these out of here. And then what else? We're going to need some pipes. I know I put a heck of a lot of pipes in here recently. So let's actually... Um, I'm going to restrict these a bit more. I had a lot of left over. Let's just have it be like that. So to, to mine up the uranium, you need to supply it with sulfuric acid. And uh, so we're going to need, I guess, a different blueprint. Let's head up here to the bigger one and maybe lay out a blueprint and... See what it's like? Yeah, just by putting it over top of that, it automatically gets the inputs for the liquid. I'm going to use the same, more or less the same uh, layout that I do for the normal mining. All right, so blueprint is all finished. Let's pick this up and then reposition it a little bit. So I think uh, we're going to be processing our uranium right here until I figure out exactly what to do with this stuff because this is the uh, first time I've done any of this. So let's actually, let's try to get... The most out of the ore here. Looks like we're gonna have a little bit that is underneath that factory building. I guess we can pick that up later. We can mine it up later once we are, once we move that mining guy inside a different factory, which will happen eventually. And then just like my other mining blueprints, we're going to line up where the lights are on the blueprint. Make uh, stamping it down extra times easy. And for now, let's move him, let's move you. Okay, and we're gonna get the light back in just a moment. Okay, stamp down. There we go. And there we go. All right, and then we need to hook it up to some sulfuric acid and we need to stamp one down here. This one's a little bit different. So uh, we'll have to do a little bit of custom stuff. In fact, I can get rid of this. And then stamp it down again. In fact, that's probably gonna be good. Yeah, okay, that looks good. So our sulfuric acid, where is the nearest pipe making that? We're transporting it right here. Right here is one. It comes up here. Uh, I can't really take it from there. We could lead it up from here, though, like that. If I just provide an underground belt to reconnect that guy. Okay. And then we'll just stretch this pipe all the way up here. I guess just straight through the bus will work just fine. Shouldn't have enough room to do that. Okay, and then we'll line it up with one of these guys. Um, I guess it doesn't have to be super pretty. We're going to mine all this stuff up, and uh, that's one of the goals for the, the series, is to mine everything up and I should have laid it out properly, yes, yeah, so that they all connect, they should all be mining. And, oh, look at this. Why am I getting a little bonus guy from the miner? It's like I have a, huh, like a, like I've got a productivity module in there. I guess they're all doing that. Maybe that's just a function of how it works. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. All right, so we need to bring it up to there. So let's, uh, I guess we'll bring it here and then turn it. Or I guess I could have brought it up through there. Doesn't matter one way or the other. So let's connect it right here, should be fine. Oh, it's just barely not gonna reach, of course not. All right, now these guys are mining. Uh, okay, so that is set up. We need those guys being processed or put it, at least for now, let's just put them into a chest so that we have some to uh, to use when we want it. So I guess I'm just going to do something like this. 
And now we need to worry about the modules. We're going to use some robots to uh, set up a quick and dirty module production area so that we can get some going so I can make that Power Armor Mark III. So, let's see. I think the ratios are slightly different for speed modules. For the Power Armor, we actually need... The only time I'm probably ever going to make efficiency modules, which lowers your power. Yeah, we need some of those. So, these guys are five speed module twos per and this guy is five this guy is five. Oh, did they change it so they're all the same they used to be a little different oh it looks like it's consistent all right so once we lay out one we can just copy it and change the recipes so uh if we want one of these crafting at a time let's say we want two because they need five uh this guy is half the speed so let's say we want two of these guys let's get my blueprint out and just put it somewhere where we're going to have room. Actually, let's start on the left and move to the right. Not sure exactly how many we're going to need yet. All right, so those will be speed module threes. Uh, so we need ten speed module twos, but they craft in half the time, so we need five. Let's go ahead and set this up so I can keep track of what we're doing. We need five. There we go. So select this. Paste it. So if we have five of these crafting, we need four speed module ones, but they as well craft at uh, twice the speed. It takes half as long, so we need ten. Uh, okay, how much more room do we have here? If we can do it all in one row, that would actually be kind of nice if we can just copy it up to the next one. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's a little bit awkward. Five, six, seven... Yeah, there's not going to be room. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, okay, guys, pick these up. Let's try again. So let's just do... Um, maybe we do the whole thing in two rows. So if I have 10 plus 5 plus 2 is 17. So I guess maybe we'll just cut these two off. Like that. And then put 8 down up above it. Should be just fine. Whoops. Okay, caught on something. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay, get, uh, get rid of this one. Whoosh, whoosh, get rid of that. All right, uh, so all these going to be speed module ones. Uh, then what we need to do, we need to limit all... Oh, these guys are already limited, I guess, from the blueprint. That's actually... We're going to limit them even more. Uh, for the speed module... We want these guys crafting forever. So let's just say we only want one stack ever at a time so we will paste all of these guys up and that flashing of the lights is not our power going out it's because i'm mousing over our logistic system and it's showing us where I, where we have coverage don't panic so the uh the speed module three is four stacks is fine for now uh next thing we need to do we need to copy paste the requirements so if you shift right click you can shift left click and that will paste the requirements in the logistics uh, in the little logistics requester thing, logistics request for our requester chest. And then I can go through and shift left click all of these because they're all asking for the same things. Oh, we didn't, uh, didn't set those up. Okay, and then these guys, uh, we need to set up a blue circuit area. This is how it's going to work, basically. All right, so I suppose we'll put the processing unit building down here, more or less. And we need to try to fit uh, as much in here as possible. We'll just try to do what we can. So if I do something like this and we cut out... Oops, that's the wrong one. If we cut out the middle one, then we'll have an output belt. And we'll have two input belts. We also will need to supply with sulfuric gas. But let's see what we can do. So if we have this and that, we're going to need to either supply the sulfuric acid on the inside, which might be a bit tricky. Let's go ahead and do like a strip of three, just so we can get an idea of what the pipes are going to look like. So if it's on the inside and we have, let's say, an inserter there, we'll need an underground pipe there as well as there. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work, so we'll have to have uh, the pipes on this side and then the output down the middle. And then what, what I'm going to try to do is use up exactly half here and then mirror it on the other side. We also have to figure out if the blue belt of happiness here will be able to supply 
all of these guys. So let's just say if I move it up, I think that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, go ahead and uh, give them the proper little uh, assembly machine operator tag and rotate all those. So they need uh, they need 20 electronic circuits to operate, and that is a lot. And since we have nine of them here, that's 180 electronic circuits, but we have 10 seconds to do it in, so that's actually only 18 items a second. And a blue belt actually supplies 40 items per second. Yeah, so a, uh, one of these blue belts should be fine. The only tricky part is figuring out exactly how the uh, the pipes are going to be. If we do an underground belt like that, um, then we'll have to connect them somewhere else. If they're going all the way across, maybe we'll do one full strip just to see how the, the pipes are going to look. Aha! I think we are onto something here. So we've got a combination of basically a, uh, a zigzag here so that we can have room for underground belts of both types for uh, both material types. That kind of rhymed a little bit. So let's see if this actually works. We will need green circuits there. Actually, we'll use a stack inserter. So for the near belts, we get stack inserters. And then for the long ones, we get long-handed inserters. Oh, it's going to work. Okay, nice. And I technically, we don't need the underground belt there, but it just lets me run through. So uh, I actually prefer that when we can do it that way. Yeah, okay, that's going to be pretty nice. Then we'll have to figure out exactly... Uh, I guess I'll have to move the thing up two spaces, and then we'll have room down here to weave the belts in, and we'll figure out exactly how they're coming in and coming out. In fact, since they're... The main output here needs to come into our logistics system for now. We probably want the green stuffs and the red stuffs coming in from the left. Okay, so here's the finished blueprint. Let's blueprint it up and give it the uh, the proper tag. In fact, I'll probably make a strip. No, actually, we can just do it with one. Put that in the inventory. We're going to rotate it. Let's take all of that down. All right, and then uh, let's see. Grab this guy, and we want it going from the left to the right. Oh, no, actually, that's wrong. Uh, stop. Robots. Too quick. You react too quick, robots. We need to provide some room so that the blueprint can be supplied with the belts and then take stuff out with the belts. We're going to do it like... Yoinks! Oh, that's right, because... Uh, yeah, this is a... Okay, let's just shift stamp it. And then we're going to run over here. Do the same thing. Shift stamp the remainder. And then... Uh, so all of that should be placed... So then we will need green belts. Oh, you know what? One thing I didn't think about is that uh, we will need one full green belt. Oh, no, I, actually, we can... Didn't I count up that we would need 18 green circuits per assembly machine? So that means if we have a green belt coming in, we can actually afford to split it. And I think it was the interior one. Getting a little confused, but I think this should be fine. Uh, the int yeah, the interior one goes like that, and then the red circuits need to be split as well, so we'll need an underground belt. Let's just sort of give it as much space as possible so we can weave some things and have as many assembly machines in here as possible. So if I do it like this, we need to split the reds as well, and that needs to go to the outside. We also need to figure out how the, uh... So if you're acid is getting in here, but one thing at a time. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's one, and then we just need to copy it down. I wonder, it would be nice if there was a uh, an option to mirror. Maybe that's more trouble than it's worth for programming-wise, but uh, it would be nice if there was an option to mirror a blueprint. Okay, so the outer one I said was the green circuits. So the green circuits need to go like here. We need a big underground section like that. And then to here. And then this is the red. Under like that. Okay, that connects up to there. And then did I run out of underground pots? I did. Let's get resupplied real quick here. And I think, yeah, I put those in my logistics system. So we should get some deliveries there. 
There we go. Very nice. Oh, it's so nice. Um, what about the assembly machine, guys? Can I have some assembly machines? Oh, I did not put them. Okay, let's add that to... Uh, actually, not that. Um, let's add these. Thank you. Jolly good. Yeah, I don't have the uh, assembly machines or the, uh, the inserters, rather, in my request system because they're in a different area. There we go. Very nice. All right, so let's see. What else is left to be set up? That was the underground guy for the green. We need to supply it with red. Okay. And then over here. Let's see. Can I even... Yeah, I think we can. Let's see. We don't need this. And we don't need that or that or that. And we've got room, I guess, for the sulfuric acid on this side. So let's pick up all this extra stuff. All right, so the layout is all done. Let's see how many mistakes I made. Probably not that many. We are in desperate need, actually. It's about that time to go in search of new oil wells because uh, we've been straining it and we are running low. I guess a lot of it is all of the sulfuric acid we're using to mine up the uranium. So let's see, that was the sulfuric acid. Now we need to hook up the, uh, the green circuits and the red circuits. So green circuits go there, red circuits go... There and there. Whoops, okay, I keep doing that. We run around so quickly, I run in and out of factories when I don't mean to. Okay, there we go. Green circuits coming in on the interior line. And then red circuits are not coming in at all. Okay, what did I do wrong? Red circuits, are they're not connected? Oh, we're, we ran out, oh. We ran out because we're not making enough plastic now because our oil is run low because we have started using a ton of sulfuric acid to empty out our uh, uranium patches here. Yeah, looks like that is the issue. These pipes are still reasonably full, but I think that's because I had some a backlog of sulfuric acid. And I just emptied out everything I had. Let's run in here. Let's look at these tanks. The tanks, these tanks are still full. Uh, let's go here. Run up here. Let's actually reverse this so it's only outputting. There we go. And let's have it output as fast as possible. You can see our plastic production has really slowed down. And I did have a stockpile of crude oil and that is basically empty. These guys are running... I guess they're not even running 100% at a time because there's not enough coming in. Storage tanks are basically empty. I do have some lubricant stored up for making uh, express belts, I guess, which is nice. Yeah. Okay, so that's an issue. That's something we're going to have to take care of. We need to kill some aliens. And looks like... Yeah, there are some good candidates for some oil here, which means we'll have to set up an oil train with the new fluid wagon. So I'll have to make some pumps. We'll have to experiment with how that works. All right, well, since the oil is low, that's the number one priority. Restore the oil. Let's get these guys. Oh, my inventory is actually full. Let's put some stuff in the car. Let's see, we don't need the uh, the walls or the turrets just yet. I'm going to do a few runs. Just uh, me versus the machines, so to speak. In fact, we can put most of that stuff in the car for safekeeping. What do I need to do? Oh, yeah, we need. that's what I was doing. I was... Switching out my uh, loanout, we're still on the, basically the shotgun, but I've upgraded my stats quite a bit through the research. See what we can do. Run it in here and just... Oh yeah, I forgot, I, uh, I also brought another tool. We have grenades. Okay, let's try the grenades as well. I don't know how much I researched grenade up dam upgrade damage. Yeah, not that much, huh? I think maybe... Yeah, oh my gosh, the shotgun is so much better. This is why I love the shotgun, the combat shotgun. Once you upgrade it, it does so much. Now, I, I was looking at uh, some of the tech stuff, and there is uranium bullets, like depleted uranium bullets you can make, but I don't think I saw depleted uranium shotgun shells. And it looks like, I guess I haven't researched that. Yeah, it's here. So you can make uh, uranium rounds or cannon shells or explosive cannon shells. I don't see a shotgun version of that. And because the shotgun is already pretty freaking awesome, and the submachine gun kind of sucks. We might give that a try, or maybe we'll uh, try it in the car or the tank. Maybe give the tank a second go. Supposedly the tank's been buffed a bit. All right, so these guys are just going to filter through here. I'm going to let them die. The, the turrets have been upgraded quite a bit as well. 
Let's take a look. We've got, uh, where's the shotgun, a shotgun, a shotgun, over here. 120% damage and 160% speed. That's pretty good. Yeah, my grenades are only plus 60%, and there is a better grenade I could be making. And then the laser turrets are, man, there's so much, oh, here we go. 40, this is, I think it's, no, that's the flamethrower. This is the gun turret. This one, laser turret. Damage 110% and speed 220%. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's a different grenade here, the cluster grenade, which is more expensive. Uh, I just haven't set up production of that. We'll set up like one mega area for military type stuff eventually. Run in here and finish these fools off. Just gonna basically do a few sweeps like this, then we'll start extending the walls with a new blueprint, and this time we will use, uh, make sure that we have full coverage with RoboPort so we don't have any pesky aliens interrupting our, our base building. But as soon as we get this set up, I guess next episode what we'll be doing is we will be trying out the cargo wagons that handle fluid, the fluid wagon. And we'll set up a uh, another train, which won't be too tricky, but I'll just have to do a little bit of testing to see how that uh, the fluid wagon operates. And we'll have to make some of the new pumps, which are a different size now. I guess they're going to be right there. Yeah, they're they are a one by two dimension instead of a one by one dimension. That's right, aliens. Okay, tell you what, for the viewer experience, let's do actually let's do it like that. There we go. Okay, so this is the new night vision. It's not nearly as dark as it used to be, and it's not green. It's not green. That's the best part. These aliens don't know what hit them. So they've got this nice, peaceful little alien village. And they're probably, like, singing some songs by the campfire. And then this ghost, this wraith, comes into their camp, moving at... Too fast for them to see, and it's it's dark anyway, and murders all of their friends. I, I think maybe there needs to be some fan fiction from the alien's perspective at some point. Look at me, yes, just melt them. And we are still not far enough along the uh, the biter evolution where we're not getting the colossal biters yet. Just murder that rock as we're going about it. But I think I've killed most of the aliens there. Yeah, so I think this guy is the one we're going to take 10,000%. So I think that'll never drop below 10% of the original. So this cluster will never drop below 1,060, 4%. Just like this one. I guess this one used to be at uh, 5,000. Now it's 500. I think that's probably those will go. And there's a number of different oil areas here as well for us to exploit as well as more uh, resources of all kinds, but I think that's going to do it. I'm going to clean up the aliens off camera, and next time we'll start with the fluid stuff, and then hopefully move on to processing uranium and uh, power armor Mark III, that kind of stuff, once we have processing units being made with our plastic and all that kind of stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.